الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته my beloved brothers and sisters and welcome to a new episode of from reverses this podcast where we إن شاء الله تعالى um, take some callers that have some questions in regards to their journey um, uh, in memorizing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as um, uh, taking some reflections and lessons from their questions and also inshallah towards the end of each episode where we will inshallah ta'ala take um, uh, one of the stories and inspiration uh, inspirations inshallah from the uh, people that have already memorized the Quran any lessons or, or tips that they may have as well as any uh, certain difficulties that they had or different ways of memorization or anything that we could benefit from inshallah ta'ala uh, this will be at, towards the end of uh, the uh, each episode inshallah ta'ala and uh, we have i think uh, our caller the first caller that we have with us i think if i'm not mistaken is sister hadil is it assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah hayyakum allah ukhti hadil how are you alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you are well, where are you calling uh, from sister hadil canada Canada, mashallah, tabarak ar-Rahman. Ahlan wa sahlan. And uh, what is your question for us today? So I'm going to give you a little bit of background. So, okay, perfect. Yeah. So last year, I listened to an Islamic podcast where uh, the guest was a Hafid, mashallah, and he spoke about his experience when he was memorizing the Quran. And one of the things he mentioned is that the hardest surah for him to memorize was Surah Al-Nahd. Now, no. for me, I recently uh, finished memorizing Surah Al-Isra and I started with Surah Al-Nahl. And subhanAllah, I remembered what that Hafid had said and I can't help but actually find it a challenging Surah to memorize. I was thinking you, of you skipping You can't help but sorry? Sorry? You said you cannot help but to what? But actually find it challenging. Okay. Yeah. I like... I like I remembered what he had said and I actually do find like the same thing. Subhanallah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um and I was thinking of skipping it and moving to Surah Al-Hijr and inshallah yeah. I'll come back to it after. So yeah. here I have two questions for you Sheikh Musa. No, First probably. is uh, from your experience when you were memorizing the Quran, did you yeah. face a similar challenge where you had a hard time memorizing a specific surah, page yeah. or an ayah? If yes, no. can you share with us some of the steps or techniques you took that you found helpful and worked for you? And my second question is, what are your thoughts on skipping surahs and not going in order? Okay, jayid inshallah ta'ala. Anything else? That's it inshallah. Okay, can I also ask you how much of the Quran have you memorized? Is it from Nas to Isra? Um, it's more of like, um, so I memorized the first quarter from Al-Baqarah to Al-An'am. Um, right. And then I moved to Fatr to to Kahf, and then I, I want to go back and connect. Um, like you, yeah, you, you, what happened Arab. with you? Something similar to me, even though it's not the best, not to that extent. Yeah. But I did memorize a bit from here and a bit from there and a bit from here when I was younger, and that actually makes it a bit more difficult, you know, to do like the organizing of the revision and so on and so forth. And plus, as well, it can also. Uh, um, يعني, uh, make you like you feel a bit lazy and you like ah oh, this is gonna be too long and demotivate you subhanallah but uh, so you have from Baqarah to An'am and from Fatir to An-Nahl like Al-Isra actually okay so from Isra to Fatir okay and then do you have from the back as well towards Surah Al-Nas or just this part yes yes Surah Al-Nas to Tabaraka Okay, so the last two ajza. Okay, jayid, inshallah ta'ala. Taban, firstly, my sister, jazakallah khayran, and welcome to uh, Reverses. Um, it's great to hear different. This is, I think, the first time we get this question uh, from the beginning of this podcast, and it's a very important question. لأنه, uh, because there is many different surahs uh, in the Quran where people may find it challenging. So you found Surah Al-Nahl challenging. Personally, I found Surah Al-Nahl easy. I really liked Surah Al-Nahl. But of course, there were some other surahs that I actually found difficult or that I found challenging, let's say, in better than using the word difficult because the Quran is easy, inshallah ta'ala, like it was more challenging. And each person goes through a different um, 
you know uh, uh, experience yani for example and i would say and i would advise every brother and sister never listen to somebody else's experience and imagine and start thinking about it because you will end up falling into that same thing so when you heard this hafiz speak about surah an-nahl that it was very challenging and the most difficult surah for him and you got to surah an-nahl you got a bit worried and you thought okay it's it's going to be um uh, that difficult for me and then you or you found it difficult of course it could have possibly as well been a bit challenging for you as well even if you didn't know about what the brother said um for me for example i remember when i was memorizing i remember the uh, a saying that some of the mashayikh used to say al an'am bahrun la yu'am surah al an'am is an ocean that you should not swim in or that you cannot swim in because of how difficult it is to memorize So I had phobia or I was like shook of surah al-an'am and scared of getting to it and when I got to it I actually found it subhanallah quite alhamdulillah yani easy and I, easier than what they made it to 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 seem like subhanallah um but yes I did have some uh, difficulties or challenges for example surah at-tawbah and you know the challenges sometimes they differ especially when you are at the beginning of your hifz or you are solidifying your memorization sometimes you might find surah yunus for example uh, challenging and then you solidify it and it's good and then you find another surah that became uh, you know a bit challenging for you so i remember surah at-tawbah uh, when i first memorized it it was nice and easy and then when i come to solidify it and revise it and make it strong i found it subhanallah very difficult and i found allahu akbar and i got scared of the surah uh, um, subhanallah alazim even surah al-kahf even though one hears it all the time and recites it Uh, so, uh, every friday but surah al-kahf is one of the surahs that i personally memorized it from hearing uh, not from subhanallah uh, reading and that uh, caused a bit of you know um, uh, an issue for me when i came to memorize and read from the quran and to try and locate where every and each ayah is it became a bit you know challenging for me subhanallah and i used to get scared of surah al-kahf subhanallah even though it is quite an easy surah because of the amount of time we repeat it The key I would tell you my sister for any uh, challenging surah and sometimes by the way it's not only a surah sometimes it could be an ayah or c- certain ayahs within a surah I would tell you is that the surah the, pa- the pages that you find difficult or the verses that you may find difficult or surahs that you may find difficult always make sure you are repeating them many 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 times and you will realize the ones that were more difficult or more challenging for you they will become your strengths And I had this subhanallah in certain ayat I remember I found a bit challenging to memorize for example everybody finds a bit of extra focus needed when it comes to the ayat of the mawarith in surah an-nisa yuwsikum Allah fi auladikum lidhakarin mithl hadh al-unthayayn fa in kunna nisaa'an fawqa thnatayn these ayat and the similarities of these ayat also surah al-maida I remember I found an ayah quite challenging um ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la taqtulu as-sayda wa antum hurum ومن قتله منكم متعمدا فجزاء مثل ما until the end of the ayah subhanallah so i found that these ayat a bit challenging but because i found them challenging and a bit hard what i needed in order for them or in order for me to memorize them is that i had to repeat them many more times and much more than the easy surahs or the easy ayat that i found easy because of the meaning and understanding them or something like that but i realized that those verses that were more challenging and a bit more difficult for me to memorize because i repeated them much more than the others i found that my hifz of those was stronger than the hifz of the easy ayat so this surah you now found find a bit maybe challenging and difficult just give it that time and repeat it just the repetition is going to what is going to be what will make it for you solid and strong once you've achieved that then khalas inshallah you'll realize actually i wish i've repeated all the other surahs the easy ones that i found or that have you found easy in the same way then my quran would all be solid like that inshallah so that is in regards to that fear or that um, challenge issue the other thing about skipping a surah i will really and strongly advise to not do that um just go in the pattern and as we were speaking uh, and uh, to, to some of the other brothers and sisters never rush there is no deadline my sister and so long as you are taking the steps in memorizing the quran and this is an advice and reminder for us that we could take inshallah in this episode is that so long as you are actually taking the steps you've made the intention and it is sincere because the actions have followed that intention and you are trying to memorize the quran and let it take many years no problem it will be more fruitful and more beneficial as we repeated and mentioned previously 
But so long as, inshallah ta'ala, you are taking the steps, even if you were to die and you uh, have not completed the hifz, Allah will give you the reward that you have as if you have completed the entire Quran without any decrease in the reward. Why? Because you were actually taking the steps and your intention was to complete the Quran, inshallah. Don't be in a rush. Take your time. Enjoy the journey. It's very pleasurable and very fruitful and very beneficial, inshallah. I hope this, inshallah ta'ala, uh, um, uh, is uh, I have answered your question with uh, your both your questions with this and just to add on to that is inshallah the problem with the memorizing and skipping surahs and things your the it will be scattered and very difficult to revise and this is how it will become even weaker so make sure you are just trying to follow inshallah ta'ala your um, the 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 uh, order of the hafiz whether you're going backwards or going the in the order of the Mus'haf, inshallah. Is that clear? I hope I've answered your question, my uh, or your questions, my sister Hadil. Yes, you did, Sheikh Musa. Jazakallah khair. Allah yafadkum. Barakallah feekum. And jazakallah khairan for calling from Canada. I think we have a caller on the line, our brother Usama. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Hayyakallah, brother Usama. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Can, can you speak up a bit, uh, brother Usama? Your voice is very far. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Hayyakallah, akhi. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Sri Lanka. From, sorry? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, okay, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, every episode we get a uh, callers from different places of the world. So our brother Osama from Sri Lanka. How are you doing today, brother? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, and what's your question, my brother? So my question is, Sheikh, uh, I have memorized like more than 13 Jews for uh, right now. Uh, I mean, like, I have forgotten everything. Like, I have memorized all of those without muraja'ah. And now I'm starting to re revise everything. But uh, it's very hard for me to revise because there are so many distractions for me, like the phone and the iPads, the social media, the games. All of these things are, like, distracting me. For example, no. let me say, if I'm... Uh, uh, I would like recite the Quran for like 15 minutes once a week, but I would see the phone for like three to four hours per day. So these distractions are affecting a lot. So what should I do for this year? Wallahi, the solution, ya akhi al-habib, uh, Usama, the solution is in your question. Um, you have a problem. And every problem, inshallah, there should be a solution for it. Um, so the beginning and the first solution is that you need to know what the problem is and you know what the problem is So the solution should be easy inshallah If you have subhanallah memorized 13 juz from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, And you have forgotten it then I will tell you what I've told people before You must you know ask Allah to forgive your sins and to forgive your shortcoming because If you have forgotten what you've memorized because of social media the tablet and games and as you were, as you mentioned yourself then this is a mushkila because you have put all of these dunya matters and and uh, that are not going to be of any benefit for you when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it's not being used for the da'wah or for any khair then subhanallah uh, like we said previously it is not an obligation for you to memorize the quran but if you've memorized any part of it it is an obligation for you to keep it and to not forget it of course, we can normally naturally forget something here or there uh, because we are created forgetful. However, you cannot forget the Quran that you have memorized if you have just by, by being lazy and just lay back and stuff. No, you have to make sure you are solid and you, inshallah ta'ala, are continuously keeping and revising what you've memorized. So my advice to you, my brother Usama, is it's so important that you sacrifice all of these things that you know are a distraction and to spend 15 times 15 sorry minutes of the week reciting the quran subhanallah is something very 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 little and a muslim should try and spend much more time than that i know and i thank you for your honesty and you are only calling inshallah to try and find a solution so i would tell you Try and feel the, 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 how big this matter is and that it could be a, a big sin, subhanAllah. And try and repent from it. And try bi to not uh, neglect uh, this uh, opportunity Allah gave you that you have completed 13 juz of the Quran and you just forget it. You need to try and get it back. 
and always make sure you are revising even when you're memorizing don't memorize and just leave what you've memorized no every day you have to revise and the revision is more important than the memorization inshallah ta'ala and try to avoid all of these gaming and the social media these are very big distractions for everyone especially these mobile phones because they're so close even subhanallah myself sometimes you will be reciting or revising and then you hear your phone vibrate and then you end up picking up your phone and this is subhanallah very bad and uh, etiquettes and respect for the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. When you're reciting Quran, khalas, you need to cancel from the dunya. And know my brother Usama that the Quran is only going to be as important as you make it to be uh, to, your, to you. And it will be as uh, important yani, to you depending on where in your list of priorities you have it. Do you have a last thing on the middle or at the top? And it has to be at the top of everything because inshallah ta'ala through that you will find the best blessings and the ease in everything else that you are doing, inshallah. You want to say something? Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh. Wiyakum. Do you have any other question, Akhi? Uh, no, actually. No problem. Uh, no, yeah, Sheikh. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you, brother uh, Usama. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you and us to keep uh, the Quran uh, and revise it and keep it steadfast. Or keep us steadfast and keep us, inshallah, strong in revising the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla until we meet Him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Zakallah khair, wa barakallah fiq. Actually, I have good... another one question. Oh. Oh, okay, yes, what's the other heard, question? I have heard that from a shaykh that he says that uh, if you are close with the Quran, if you are with the Quran, the Quran uh, in the graveyard, that the Quran will come as a person to you. If you said in your question that does the Quran come as a person with you in the grave, then that of course not it's not the case. No, the Quran will come as a witness for you uh, in whichever form, as a person or other than that, it will not be in the grave as a person, like two people buried in the grave or something. Of course not. The Quran will come in the, in in a way that it will witness for uh, for you or against you. May Allah forbid, and it will be inshallah ta'ala a company for you in the grave ask and light ta'ala as mentioned in different athar uh, uh, in the ahadith wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam zakallahu khayran wa barakallahu feek طيب my beloved brothers and sisters uh, we have inshallah ta'ala now uh, a hafiz as normal uh, towards the end of the episodes we have a hafiz where we will inshallah shed some light on their story on any um, parts of their story that they would like to share with us that could be of benefit to the brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala in their journeys as well as any advice or tips that they may give towards the end that could also be an inspiration for others and benefit and reminder for us all bi ta'ala and on the line we have with us our hafiz uh, and brother uh, Muhammad Umar assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh hayyakallah akhi Muhammad Umar i believe you are calling us from Malta yes i'm calling from Malta Naam, mashallah. Malta, yani the brother Muhammad Umar, I think you've mentioned that you are studying medicine there. Yes, yes, I'm studying medicine, yes. And you were born in Somalia and you lived in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Can you tell me a bit about this, this, this part of your life, please? So I was born in London. So Oh, in London? Few... Okay, all oh, right, yeah. okay. Mashallah, that's first, a new one. <laughs> the first, like, seven years I was in London and then I moved to... Uh, Jeddah. Okay, so you haven't lived in Somalia? No, no, I haven't lived there. Subhanallah, Jameel, Jameel, Jameel. And then you've uh, re moved recently to continue your studies uh, in Malta, yes? Yes, yes. MashaAllah. Um, do please tell us and share with us, inshallah ta'ala, a bit about your journey of Quran, your age maybe now. When did you start your uh, memorization? How old were you? How long did it take you to memorize the Quran roughly? Any challenges that face you in the way or on the journey uh, to completing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So I'm uh, 22 years old and uh, the first uh, part of my hijj journey was when I was uh, young and I, I stopped uh, at Surah Zumar when I was about 14 years old but then I took a, a big gap and I didn't uh, continue my memorization till I was about 18 and I, I left uh, Saudi Arabia. SubhanAllah. And so you started uh, your memorization again, or let's say you restarted when you were uh, 18 uh, and that was when you went to Malta. Yes, yes. So when I first left Saudi Arabia, I did one year in Dublin and 
then I moved to Malta and uh, I started, you're an international uh, brother Muhammad Umar Allahum Barik. So I started uh, in Dublin right before COVID started and okay. I was with a teacher and uh, I was with the, that teacher and I lost contact with that teacher uh, as soon as uh, the lockdown started and COVID and uh, then I was uh, trying to find a lot of teachers online which uh, happened to be unsuccessful so I was moving around a lot of teachers so my first khatam I completed in uh, 2020 so it took me about one year and a half the first khatam however it was uh, very weak uh, so, and probably would would you say, brother uh, uh, Muhammad Omar, is that the possible uh, reason of it being weak is that it was done in a very short period of time? I think uh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, but another reason was I wasn't doing a lot of muraja, so every day I would have new dars, new dars, a uh, new lesson, and I would not like read what I learned the day before or mm. the week before. So the lack of revision. Mm. Yeah, the lack of revision. So when I uh, when I made the first khatam, I realized that I don't really know. I don't really know anything except for what I did the last week, like Surah Baqarah, which I finished in, and Juz'amma basically. Subhanallah. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. And, uh, and then, subhanAllah, you started again when you were 19, did you? Yeah, yeah, because then I found a teacher, which was, I still have the same teacher. So the past year, and like from, 20, from 2021, and I had another teacher. But then from 2022, beginning of 2022, I've had the same teacher. And that teacher, I've done uh, so far two khatams on him, and that's when the hifth, like became more solid. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, that's excellent. Would you say, Akhil Habib, that your time at university um, has helped you spend more time with the Quran? I would say yes, because uh, when you're at university, you have uh, a lot of free time. Even in medicine, it's yes. a big misconception, which... Uh, I fully, and that's the reason I asked you the question, because I fully agree with you. And I personally, the best of times I've spent with the Quran was when I was in university. There was so much time on our hands. Yes, yes. Like it's underestimated how much time you have in your hand. Like outside of the the lectures and the hours you're studying, you have the rest of the day to do whichever, whatever, whatever you want, basically. And that's when... Uh, that's and when Allah Azza wa gave you tawfiq that you chose to spend that spare time in memorizing and revising the Qur'an. Uh, Alhamdulillah, that's all I can say. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Wallahi, this is great to hear. This is great to hear, Muhammad uh, Umar. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to allow you to be an example for others, a medical doctor um, that is also a hafiz of the Quran. And I ask Allah to allow you to take your Quran studies further until you become a scholar in the Quran and Qiraat, as well as جل, a practicing and scholar in your uh, in medicine. Um. Allahumma ameen. Uh, Finally, brother Muhammad Umar, do you have or would you like to share with us some advice and tips that summarizes throughout your experience, which inshallah ta'ala can benefit our brothers and sisters and be an inspiration for them. And bi'idhnillah ta'ala you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and find the fruits of this advice and tips that you give brothers and sisters inshallah. Uh, the first main tip would be uh, to come with sincerity and always uh, try Renew your intentions and ask yourself why, why you wanna be like why you wanna be a hafid? Why do you wanna memorize the Quran? Like, what, what, is, what is the reason you wanna have a connection with the Quran? Like, that question should always be asked like daily, or as multiple times as someone can. The second advice would be um, to always focus on muraja and being consistent with reading the previous lessons that you learned in order to not forget it. And uh, that's a big issue I had in my first khatam, which yeah. then I learned from that lesson. Inshallah, I learned from that lesson. And uh, and if somebody maintains a revision, by the time they memorize or complete the khatam, it's going to be much stronger than the other person who just uh, memorizes, memorizes without uh, reviewing what he learned. Yeah. Subhanallah. Excellent, excellent. Allah. May Allah bless you and reward you, subhanAllah, for this beautiful advice that I cannot agree more with, subhanAllah. It is excellent. 
and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it heavy on the scale of your good deeds, my brother Muhammad Umar, and to uh, allow you and us to unite in khair and to benefit from the Quran and to allow us to benefit others, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bless you, Ya Muhammad Umar. Thank you so much for your time with us. Jazakumullah khairan, my brothers and sisters. With this, inshallah ta'ala, we will conclude today's episode and we will see you all again, bi'idhnillah, in the near future. Until then, I leave you all with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.